What's up guys, David Land here bringing you another Reddit trigger, or I mean diecast review. This time we are taking a look at a 1999 Swift, this specifically is Christian Fittipaldi's from the 1997, 1999, ooh that was bad, cart season. This is the big Kmart Newman Haas Racing Swift, and if you guys know anything about me in uh, my personal life, I am a huge fan of Kmart stores. Now that seems like a weird thing to be a fan of, but I just absolutely love Kmart stores. I always have since I was a little kid, uh, and I, it's sad to see the brand die, or die a slow death I suppose, uh, but it's great to have this car uh, as a remembrance for all time, the greatness that is Kmart uh, when it, the brand finally does die. Though, I can still go to my local Kmart and uh, buy my uh, my groceries and my clothes and all the other things that make uh, David Land, David Land. Uh, but yeah, this is Christian Fittipaldi's 1999 Swift. They also did do a Michael Andretti. It's a little harder to come by, of course, because Michael Andretti is a little bit more popular of a driver, but Michael Andretti's is not Kmart sponsored, and that's why I picked this one up, obviously, from my last one minute rant on Kmart. Uh, but I had to go to the Great White North to get this thing. Bought it from Canada, so thank you to our Canadian friends for putting one of these up for sale. They don't come up as much um, from the American Muscle segment, as you can see, uh, produced by Ertl. Uh, I think they're most famous for tractors, but uh, you've already seen another one of these cars reviewed by me. It was a Jill DeFerrin uh, 1998 Reynard. This is on a road course aero kit. That one was on a super speedway aero kit. Uh, but the American Muscle uh, 1999 Swifts from Andretti and Fittipaldi, hard to come by. So when this uh, came up, I definitely had to pull the trigger on it and buy it. Now, obviously, uh, this is one of three ways you can get a Swift IndyCar. Obviously, the American Muscle version is probably the cheapest way you can get one in 118 scale. You also have the choice of Fittipaldi and Andretti. Uh, Action Racing Collectibles did a an Andretti version. Uh, that one is very expensive on eBay. You're going to have to probably drop $100 on it, but it does have the removable shock cover and the removable engine cover. This model uh, is a static model that does not have any of those removable, removable features. Uh, the other way to get a Swift IndyCar is to buy the Hot Wheels Pro Racing uh, 1998 first edition uh, uh, 164 scale die cast. Uh, I've already done reviews on both the Michael Andretti, which is the Haviland car, which is similar to this livery, and the Christian Fittipaldi, the driver that we are reviewing today. Of course, this was when the car was in a Budweiser livery, uh, so that you won't see uh, any Budweiser logos on this because, of course, a 164 scale car sold in Kmart is a uh, is a children's item but um, this is a diecast, kind of uh, what my uh, friend Diecast Reviews, you should go subscribe to him by the way, would call a Senpai car. And this is definitely a Senpai car for me uh, because of the Kmart connection, because of the Swift connection, because of the Kart connection, because of Newman Haas. It pretty much is a perfect diecast for a person like me. So let's take a close look at this thing in the box. Of course it comes on this little uh, cheap plastic base. Uh, that's the only time you're going to see that in this review. I don't think it's really necessary to go over the Kart logo. 1990. Swift. Uh, by the way, Christian Fittipaldi won a race in 1999. It was uh, the race at Road America. I believe it was the only win for the Newman Haas team in the 1999 Kart uh, FedEx World Series Championship, or whatever they called it at that point. Uh, but yeah, uh, he took a victory at Road America, uh, and it was also the last victory for the Swift chassis and Kart. They ran one more year with Tarso Marquez at Dale Coyne Racing, and then they were out of the sport. And uh, here's some base removal tips uh, that I will be following hopefully very closely. And there you go. Pretty much uh, nothing else uh, to go over on the box. So let's get open this beautiful Kmart Swift and take a look at it. So here it is out of the box, the big, beautiful Kmart Swift. Uh, 118 scale, I don't think I mentioned that. You could probably see it on the box and you could probably tell from context clues that it was, but I figured I would mention it. Uh, let's go a, do a uh, Robbie Noonan steal of 03, 60 view around the car. There is a problem with it, um, at, at least in the decaling, and it's something that's just been done here is this big K logo is not as big as it should be. Uh, and I think that's because this bit here is plastic and uh, they didn't want to uh, try to uh, print uh, on metal and plastic. It probably wouldn't have lined up, so they didn't do it. 
Um, not a huge complaint for me because ultimately the model looks very nice. Of course, you can see uh, the front tires do turn, uh, both left and right, and they turn quite smoothly. You can also see the big Kmart logo on the rear with the big old diffuser there uh, for all that all-important uh, ground effects uh, downforce. Uh, you can see the mirror there, a little bit wonky. We'll take a closer look at that here in a second. Uh, beautiful car. Uh, obviously, this is kind of my favorite era of IndyCar racing. I think I may have mentioned that a few times because the cars just looked absolutely fantastic. And I think this was one of the better looking cars, the Swift. Also, the, the paint scheme uh, is very, very basic. It's just a black car with a white wing. But what makes it a great paint scheme is all of these sponsors. The sponsors make the car, uh, and obviously, uh, Kmart was kind of the pioneering uh, engine in getting companies like Target to join IndyCar Racing because they created the sponsorship model in which you see all of these uh, little contingency sponsors on here. The reason that is is because they, Kmart would make a deal with these companies to help pay for the racing sponsorship. They would give them uh, preferential shelf space. That was the same for what Target did all the way up to last year uh, when they got out of the sport. And they still do it in NASCAR. Um, so the bigger you see a logo on a race car that has a supermarket on it, generally you can go into the store and find that uh, that product is front and center and the competing brands are on lower shelves or higher shelves, not on eye level. Just a little interesting factoid there about that. So let's take a look at this uh, Newman Haas Swift. Uh, for Christian Fittipaldi, like I said, he did win in the 1999 season, so I guess you could technically say this is a a Road America winner because that was the race he won. Uh, obviously this was the first year that Newman Haas ran Firestone tires. They had been one of the stalwarts of Goodyear up, in, up until that point. And of course uh, Goodyear's last year in the sport was 1999. So once they lost a big team like Newman Haas, they were pretty much screwed. You got the Swift logo, Swift Engineering, uh, which almost built the new IndyCar for 2012 uh, and it didn't happen. Uh, big Kmart. Obviously, uh, a lot of you people will still know Kmart as Big Kmart because a lot of the stores have not uh, changed away from that uh, branding uh, because of financial reasons, of course. Uh, Duracell Ultra. This was the logo you would always see because the onboard camera would be pointing uh, this direction. Uh, Christian Fittipaldi. Actually, really nice uh, driver detail. There's nothing on his suit but it is the correct suit because the new old Newman Haas suits were a white top with uh, black pants, or at least the simulation of black pants. And Christian Fittipaldi's helmet was always really cool. Uh, a really cool design, and they actually did a really good job of uh, stickering this thing up so that it looks like Christian Fittipaldi's helmet. You can see Route 66, Texaco, uh, the big Kmart logos, obviously. And then, of course, Christian Fittipaldi and the Brazilian flag. If you didn't know the Fittipaldis are from Brazil, now you do. Ford Racing, FedEx, Bosch, all that good stuff there. Obviously, the big Kmart logos that you would see on the onboard camera. Obviously, this one did not have a uh, an onboard camera mount, but usually the Swifts had a, like I said, an onboard camera mounted somewhere around here, and it would be pointing at the driver. So you'd see Duracell Ultra, big Kmart, Coca-Cola. Uh, then you've got the windscreen here uh, with the... Um, with the mirrors, which do have little reflective uh, bits there, they just didn't paint the uh, the mirrors for whatever reason. And then you can see Christian Fittipaldi in there uh, making steering adjustments. Actually, that's me, but you know, uh, the making of videos. Uh, here you go. You've got the Firestone Firehawks, and what's weird is they never ran silver or chrome rims, and yet the diecast makers, except for Hot Wheels, always persisted on giving Newman Haas chrome wi uh, chrome wheels. Never understood that. Uh, not accurate. And then you've got this little shark fin down here, or I guess I'm not really a shark fin. What is this called? A barge board. Uh, very Formula One style. Um, it's something that the Swifts ran. Uh, in fact, uh, also the uh, the Reynards ran it too uh, back in the day. Uh, but they got rid of them. Swift kept them. And you've got a little Texaco logo. Of course, that's not asymmetrical. It's uh, symmetrical. It's on both sides. You also got international trucks and Bell South. Many people uh, will know that uh, from uh, Kenny Irwin, Irwin Jr. from the NASCAR series. And then you got Big Kmart, the obviously smaller Big Kmart logo. Uh, the on the actual car, the Big Kmart logo kind of went across here. But again, this is plastic. This is metal. So I guess they didn't want to print that logo on two sides. Firestone logos there. Uh, and then you've got the uh, really kind of cool uh, kick up in front of the rear tire here. 
which has actually got some uh, additional wings in there. Kind of a neat design. Uh, Route 66, you can still get that clothing at Kmart, uh, though I don't think I really wear any of their brands. Uh, we've got a little tiny logo there that says Power by Cosworth. Because, of course, at that point, Cosworth was owned by Ford, and Ford produced the engines for this car, as you can see on the rollover hoop, if it would focus. Thank you. Uh, car number 11, of course, uh, Michael Andretti was car number 6. 6 and 11 were the Newman Haas numbers for quite a few years. Duracell, Coca-Cola, Gillette Mach 3 Off, Kodak Premium uh, Processing. I'm pretty sure that's just um, photo development or whatever. Then you got a little teeny tiny shark fin there, but not a big one. Not like on the Raynards where it was like all the way down the engine cover. Just a little teeny tiny stabilization fin there. Again, Firestone tires. You got the Texco logo. Sprint, which is interesting to see on an Indy car for obvious reasons. And then you've got the uh, big old big Kmart logo. And unlike Hot Wheels, they actually got this detail right where it's a white rear wing. See, this is when you get that look from the... From the mean looking front end of this car, you get to see that big menacing white wing. But yeah, this, this mirror is definitely screwed up and I'm not going to touch it because that thing looks fragile. And then on the back, once again, you got the big Kmart logo, which looks a little bit, little bit uh, circular there. Uh, and then, of course, just totally steal from Robbie, this side the same as the left. But uh, yeah, just an absolutely wonderful car. This is definitely something that takes me back to my childhood, the old... IndyCar Racing Magazines there. Uh, let's see. Look on the bottom here. See if there's anything uh, particularly interesting. Not a lot of bottom detail here, I must say. Uh, a lot of plastic. In fact, the front wing is, is plastic as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then you've got, well, maybe we should flip this over so we can actually read what's on the bottom there. Uh, you got a product code here. I don't know what that means. Is it the 250 or 2,569th made, I don't know. And then you got the Ertl logo and not a whole lot else uh, in terms of detail down there. But an absolutely fantastic looking car. Real quick, since I, I got it out for, uh, for comparative purposes uh, and just kind of to show off the collection here, uh, we do have the, uh, the 98 Joel DeFerrin car. Obviously this is a Raynard chassis, so a little bit different. It's also on the uh, oval kit. For whatever reason, um, there was never a Swift produced on an oval kit, so you can only get it, only get Swift Indy cars on the road course kit, whatever. Uh, and then you've got the Reynard here with obviously the much smaller wings. Uh, I guess, I suppose you could do a custom if you got one of these, uh, if you wanted to shell out the money and get a Reynard, take the wings off of it and put it on the Swift. That actually would look pretty cool. But anyway, uh, that is Christian Fittipaldi's. Uh, big Kmart Swift from Newman Haas Racing. A big time, uh, pun, uh, a big uh, nostalgia trip for me, obviously, um, and for anybody pretty much that uh, was invested in kart, champ car racing back in those days. I mean, these black Newman Haas cars were kind of, I mean, they're probably secondary to the, uh, the Target Bolt cars as kind of the iconic uh, paint schemes, but certainly these cars were staples, staples of uh, IndyCar racing in the late 90s. And I'm very, very happy to add this one to the collection. Being a kart fan, being a Kmart fan, being a Newman Haas racing fan, uh, pretty much this is the perfect diecast for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah!